man, it's just uh weed. It ain't even that serious. It's about to be legalized. He was trying to tell you that. You oh, no. I don't care.
<laughs> hey, they must know I'm finna cook this boy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, man, let me roll up some swagger dash, man. The fix is in, y'all. They know I'm gonna cook this boy. Oh man. Why all of a sudden my computer keep cutting off and on all of a sudden? Come on, dog. Don't do it like that, dog. <laughs> Don't do it like that, dog. Every time you put this clown name in the chat, they do it like that. Oh, man. Don't do it like that, dog. They blocked the stream. What do you mean they blocked the stream? <laughs> what do you mean they blocked the stream? So y'all can hear me now. Okay. 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 Now you done pissed me off. Now you done pissed me off. Let me start that song back again, man. Let me start this song back again, man. Demon. Four long get along gang demon. Four long get along gang demon. There's a go along get along gang demon. Oh my! Patch eyed demon. Patch eyed black face short little demon. Oh my! Patch eyed demon. Patch eyed black face short little demon. Oh my! Patch eyed demon. Patch eyed black face short little demon. Oh my! Patch eyed demon. Patch eyed black face short little demon. Oh my! Raccoon eyed bastard, raccoon eyed black face, short little bastard. Oh my! Raccoon eyed bastard, raccoon eyed black face, short motherfucker. We see you now. Bastard, 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 Charlemagne the bastard. We see you now. Bastard, perm head, bastard, commercial looking bastard, Charlemagne the bastard. <laughs> y'all so if you did not know Stephen A. Smith aka Mr. One Point aka it's lower than that because I didn't play first of all put some respect on my name Stephen A. You're talking to Mr. Georgia you wasn't Mr. Nothing you see you even said in the own video boy your daddy talked about you your own daddy thought you was a loser no I know I know I know that was wrong of him to say but like you said to me, that's what you were showing at the time. See, see, by your own logic, if you showing at the time, if I was showing at the time, like you say, in 2007, 2008, that I could not play in the league, then 
you was right in saying what you were saying is what you were saying, right? So then that would make your father right for what he was saying because you were slow at the time, remember? You know, you got held back. Those were your marks. So in all fairness, you know, I was a teenager when it happened to me. You was a preteen when it happened to you, you know. But see, you had a lot, a lot of stuff happen to you. See, at least I, I dominated it and made it to the top of what I do. You know, in high school, I was Mr. Georgia, McDonald All-American. Didn't win the state, though. Came close. Stayed on my same team. You know. Oh, did I mention I was prom king as well? Signed and sealed and delivered to the University of Florida. You know, very early. You know. Made the ACT score very quickly. So while you couldn't read, while you couldn't write, daddy was calling you a dummy. I was excelling not only on the basketball court, but in the classroom. Um, when we compare my stats to yours for doing more than just watching and looking, your stats speak for themselves. They self. You don't have a high school career. You don't have a college career. You have nothing. You finally got your own network. You did the same job for 20 years. And Cameron don't respect you. Cameron is a Queens nigga, man. Don't you hear the way him and Dame Dash talk? Dame Dash don't respect nobody to do the same job for 20 years. And Cam is his boy. You did the same job for 20-something odd years, boy. The same exact job of talking shit about black men. I pretty much made your career, Stephen A. You wasn't nothing before you started saying Kwame Brown. That is like one of the most things you know for other than getting loud. You known for snitching on AI, getting your coach fired, and talking about Kwame Brown that you call Kwame. I see you still got that in speech impediment, boy, because my name is Kwame, you dumbass. You say to this day, you go and look up the dictionary and you make sure you look at how the word is used in a sentence and you make sure you study that word and you go get it and you make sure you can say it right so nobody can call you stupid. So then Stephen A, are you stupid or are you just disrespectful? Because you haven't figured out how to pronounce my name in 20 something odd years, you clown. And everybody in the world can say my name. It's easy. It's Kwame. Or was your daddy right about you, dummy? <laughs> What's your daddy right about you, dummy? And before anybody start putting in the chat, you can say it either way. I said, he said, he looks up the word to study it and see how they use it. I don't say my name as Kwame Brown. I, when you see me in interviews, my name is Kwame. He heard me say my name is Kwame. So that's no excuse. He know exactly what my name is, and he said he's an educated man. So now we can put it on record that he's willfully disrespecting me. So any disrespect that comes his way is warranted. Because he's saying Kwame Brown on purpose to please his white boss. See? And Stephen A., I don't know why you said my name. I don't know why you keep saying my name, but I do know why. You missed them paychecks. See, your highest view material is when you say my name. And it's crazy the fact that now you're trying to spin it like I'm clout chasing and talking about you. You was in an interview saying all kind of stuff about your daddy, about your upbringing in school, about where you hooped at at the park. Mark Jackson ain't know none of them places. But ironically, he's from up the street from you. But Mark Jackson ain't know no, well, nowhere where you hooped at. But nevertheless... Out of the blue, you just said my name. Like Kwame Brown, he wants to bring up my name. Bring up your name. When you said my name every draft, I was, I was retired. I was gone from the game. And guess who would bring my name up? Stephen A. Guess what he'd be talking about? Who's a bus and how there's a bus? Stephen A done went to high schools and colleges. What were you teaching these people, Stephen A? What did they learn from you? A broke knee pump. So let's get into this, man. Let's get into the meat and potatoes of what you say. What you said. I'm sorry I have to do this. I'm sorry I'm not sorry. 
But let's get into the meat and potatoes of what you said. And let's begin to break this down how you said it. In my <laughs> field, I'm at the top of what I'm doing. Right. How about you? What are you doing in your field? Are you at the top of what you're doing? And so far, the notice, get back to me. Exactly. That's it. That's yeah. all. But, but also, I let them say it. I let them show whatever they Uh, we're going to play this under fair use. We're going to play this under fair use so we can hear Broke Knee run his mouth. Uh, matter of fact, we might as well put an overlay over it and just play the audio of it. I don't think Mark Jackson will flag me, but I don't know because uh, he's with Underdog. You know, Underdog has got a boy over there that don't like me. But... uh. I have no problem with underdog. Shout out to underdog fantasy. All right, let me make sure this is up enough. That song is up enough. All right, so let me play this. Fair use, fair use. They want to show, they're going to show a bit. I'm in a shirt and tie. James Harden, let me shoot without warming up. I shoot the air ball. They're going to show that from 12 years ago. I'm like, I said, is that what you got? Go ahead. Right. And then you, you got, got this damn Kwame Brown talking. And I'm sitting there like, you talking about us talking. Hey, y'all, he almost acted like he was, he was about to choke saying my name. Hey, listen, you could tell this is a clout chase. He ain't want to do this, man. He's trying to get his show up, y'all. Bless his heart. He did not want to do this, man. He trying to get his show up. He didn't want to do this. And, and then you got this damn Kwame Brown talking. And I'm sitting there like, you talking about us talking about black people. All you do is talking about black people. You go. So he said, you talking about us. All I do was talk about black people. Uh, well, I beg to differ, sir. I beg to differ. Uh, for years, uh, let me get on camera for this. Let me explain something to you, boy. In case you didn't know, boy. You are not my kind, boy. I wouldn't spit on you if you was on fire. All you do is disrespect black men. You are not my kind. And for years, men like me been talking to you, men like you like this our whole life. Let me show you your kind, boy. This is your kind. Let me show you your kind. But I, I got want. something very simple to tell you that I, I figured out that I think will work for anybody in the world of corporate America and beyond. I wake up every day with two missions in mind. How do I make my bosses more money and how do I get some of it? Very simple. Why? Do you see the way that lady looking at you, boy? She looking at you just like this, the same way I'm looking at your dumb ass. Do you see the way that black woman is looking at you, you fool, boy? We are not the same. I don't wake up every day thinking about getting no man some more money. And if I had a job, you idiot, I would wake up thinking about doing a good job because it is my job. But then I would be thinking about taking my paycheck and going to make sure I get from up under this proverbial man and be able to get me an income stream coming in outside of my boss money. See, this is the reason why you had the same job for 20 something years, you idiot. You made all this money and you finally just starting to get your own. What a dummy. Salute Kwame, uh, thinking about printing up some t-shirts uh, DTC, uh, defund these Stephen A. Smith, defund Stephen A. Smith, pick, uh, and others on the front of it. Salute to you, K. What is it? Kevin Kale. Salute to you, Kevin Kale. I'm just, I just don't understand this clown. This dude is talking all macho and got all this bravado and nigga, you just became a boss. You had to ask Disney, can you be allowed to use your own likeness. You had to ask Disney to put it in your contract for you to have your own show. You were owned boy. And since I was a teenager, they, yeah, they controlled my likeness. I had to sign over my likeness. But since a teenager, I did it my way, you clown. 
and that's what hurts you but okay let's keep it going let's keep it going let's let's hear your words again because Stephen a this don't work for me i don't think like this in the same way this black woman was looking at you that's how i'm looking at you dummy but thank god you finally got your own so now you can put a little bass in your voice but you take that bass out your voice when you're talking to me you ain't got no high school stats you don't have nothing you're not a mcdonald's all american hell i can't even go look up anything about stephen a you played at a tournament kwame would you have, would you be surprised to know uh what athletes names contracts uh contacts and thank you for standing up for athletes salute to you these clowns still talking uh they still breathing kb <laughs> this rust gray is salute to you but yeah this this dude is a straight up clown this don't work for me Stephen a i can never think like this boy you a boy to me every i don't care how much money you make and this is what these guys use oh i'm looking at it like where i'm at this is what Stephen a this is what cameron said and this is what Stephen a agreed with i'm looking at where i'm at in life and if your show ain't as successful as mine then you know holler at me well if you had to get bump in the butt then i don't look at us the same i'll stay on my independent grind where i don't got to get bump in the butt if i got to go think for my boss getting a check before me then i'll stay right here i'm good i'll stay independent i'm straight if you got to do unsavory things to make it, then I'll stay right here. If I got to talk about every Negro in the world to make it, then I, I'm i good. I'm good. I called out two dumb athletes that sat back there and disrespected me even after the ball stopped bouncing for me. I don't know why y'all trying to change this narrative. Y'all not going to be able to change a narrative. I retired, went on my way. I didn't give a fuck what y'all was saying. Because while you calling me a bust, I'm playing Monopoly. I don't give a fuck what no opinions are or what you think I am as far as a basketball player. But as far as a man, nigga, you lacking. I wasn't talking about no basketball. When I came on the internet, I was on Facebook talking about life. Talking about a mindset where you don't have to turn into a Stephen A and join little boys clubs to make it. This man is an honorary q dog. He's an honorary doctor. And I don't care how many jackets they put on you. You ain't black. You don't think like me, boy. You think like this right here, Stephen A. This is how you think. Yeah, so nigga, don't ever keep saying I talk about black folks. I talk about you and your kind. Now let's keep going on the video. On over about black people every day. I ain't never talk about you personally. I ain't never talk about your family. I ain't never talk about you. I never would do that. All I said was, on the NBA level, you couldn't play. Yeah. Now, I don't know anyone on the planet who would tell me that I'm wrong about what I said. Now, on the NBA level, I can't play. Okay. Uh, kids, check the source before you listen to people. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He can't catch the ball. He's got bad feet. He can't really move, even though he's mobile. Doesn't really know what he's doing. Doesn't have a post move that he, he puts to memory that he can do two times in a row. He has no game whatsoever. Plays no defense. Doesn't have the heart, the passion, or anything that comes with it. Now, this man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He so, Stephen A., you can't run. You can't shoot. You can't throw. You can't punch. What can you do? You ain't never been at the top of nothing. You keep saying that you're at the top of sports media no that's espn that's at the top when they fired you dummy they were still at the top you're just a pawn in the chess Pete. you're just a pawn in the chess game boy your job is to talk about black males the moment you talked about black women boop, you got the boot you came right back and doubled down talking about black men this is all you do boy so kids check the source before you listen to a bald head weasel like this 
the only reason why you're getting admiration and kudos from Cameron and all these other podcasters is because they get a bump for liking a clown like you. We know Disney and all these places that put push you and put money behind you, you clown. Let me show you how the go along, get along gang works. If I was to play nice and make nice with Stephen A, they would pump my page again, probably give me a deal. But I've been called what's blackball. I've been called controversial because the truth is controversial now. When this bald head weasel won't mention why did he go to high schools and colleges to talk about an NBA player? What should be happening is that me and my family should get the biggest lawsuit ever uh, created against Disney, ESPN, and Stephen A. And all of these clowns that try to control my image and likeness that pump these lies out year after year after year about a young man uh, that was black and that was male that did not fit the stereotype. Scalabrini, I say again, Scalabrini Brini was called the white mamba. You know, same level as Kobe. Scalabrini probably worked for the NBA right now. I'm almost certain of it. When they call these black players a bust, lazy, all these things that this idiot disseminates out of his mouth, he lowers these players' contract. He even got so bold to call for a one-year deal for Kyrie Irving. But he's not bad for our community. A guy that fakes it till he make it. You can't find his high school career. You can't find his college career. It's all one tournament. It's all one game he played well, which gives him some sort of validity to talk about a man that's Mr. Georgia. To talk about a man that's a McDonald's All-American. To talk about a man that has a history and a track record of something. And I was the prom king. Don't forget that too, boy. That's a hell of a high school goddamn career. But this idiot has none of those things. But because they marketed this little talking punk that his daddy didn't like or the coach didn't like, no real man liked this boy. I wonder why. Act like your mama, boy. But anyway, keep it moving it right along. Let's hear some more from this clown. And he just said that nobody would say otherwise. Nobody would say otherwise. Later on in the clip, he's going to hear somebody say otherwise. But before we get to that, let me show you how they hired Stephen A at his job. Because Stephen A, he don't know how to treat people. See, he got there, they treat him like a boy. You know, although they treat us athletes pretty good, this is how they treat us athletes. And this is how they tell Stephen A and uh, all the little media pundits at their little ESPN jobs to do. We don't get the Josh Giddy treatment. Uh, we don't get uh, Dana White treatment, a man that clearly st struck his broad three times and somehow he's not canceled in America. Uh, nobody said there's never a time that you hit a woman. Hell, Stephen A. was able to call him his friend. Uh, but let it had to been Javante Tank Davis. And it was a black woman that got hit. ESPN would have fired him. Because, you know, black women, I guess, are the only women that you could say. You know, I started to notice a trend. Charleston White and all these people can say things about white women that they cannot say about black women. Had Charleston White came on the internet and said he great black women, he would have been off of the internet faster than you could say hi to. But because he said he great white women, uh, and, they, and then he got the chance to say prove it, he would have never got a chance to say prove it if he would have said that about black women. So we got to start watching the undertone racism or whatever we want for others. The Bible say do unto others as you want done unto you. So our word grape is great. We should not be okay with that from anybody's mouth, playing or not. But let's get to this clown. This is how Stephen A. Them was trained. This is how he was trained. Tina Sugar, could you take Django there and take him around the ground here and show him all the pretty stuff? I must remind you, Django is a free man. He cannot be treated like a slave. Understood, Schultz. But Tina Sugar? Yes, sir. Django isn't a slave. Django is a free man. You can't treat him like any of the other niggas around here because he ain't like any of the other niggas around here. You got it? You want I should treat him like white folks? No, that's not what I said. Then I don't know what you want, big daddy. I can see that. What's the name of that Pecklewood boy from town that works with the glass? Oh, you mean Jerry? That's the boy named Jerry. You know Jerry, don't you, sugar? Yes, and big daddy. Well, that's it then. You just treat him like you would Jerry. So you really free? Yes, I was free. You mean you want to dress like that? I need to ask you to look up the three white men. John Brittle, Ellis Brittle, Roger Brittle.
And see, that's why we different, boy. I'm steady plotting and planning and strategizing, boy. Not that I want no problem with nobody, but I'm steady plotting and planning and strategizing to have my own. I don't want to be up under the tit, boy. So you see, they don't treat me like they treat them white boys, Stephen A., but they treat me a little bit better than you. See, you don't got to like me, but you're going to respect me, Stephen A. And that's the difference between me and you, boy. So you're not my kind. So I wish you stopped going around the internet saying that. You not black, in my opinion. You just a typical Negro, a buck dancing punk that get his chips from the white man's table by disrespecting black people. And so, sir, you are not my kind. So I don't feel no kind of way talking about you. You talked about me for 20 years and now you want to invoke your black power. You talked about me as a teenager, you fucking clown. Do you not know that? I'm, I'm tired of some of these people when they get called out, they take this black position, this righteous position. Did you think I was white when you was talking about me in that way, boy? Did you think I was a white man when you was calling me bona fide scrub and he can't play and saying all the stuff you said? When I got traded, you asked for the Lakers and, and the Lakers fans to throw a parade, you idiot. What does that have to do with talking about basketball? This has nothing to do with basketball for you. You was the little engine that could, and you've been hurt your whole life, boy. You hated to see a 19-year-old excel in the way that I did and the way that I continue to excel, and you can't understand why. You got to travel all over the world to do what somebody tell you to do, and all I got to do is go live or put up some new paint. You call yourself winning. I don't call what you're doing and winning. Now, that was years ago. So it's like, I I'm sorry. I don't mean to be. I'm like, I apologize, bro. I'm sorry for telling the truth at the time. My, My bad. bad. I didn't, didn't mean it. I didn't mean it to haunt you 15 years later. It's okay. I wish you nothing but the best. But every time I turn around, the brother keep talking about me. Hey, you know when they about to lie, when they psychoanalyze somebody else. You know, I don't know why he's hurt and the brother keep talking about me. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry, brother. My bad. It's 15 years later. He want to get it on record that he keep apologizing. Stephen A., until you come talk to me, boy, F your apology. You can go on everybody's show and bring my name up. Until you get out, of, get off. I ain't going to say that because your mother's not alive anymore. Mine is not either. But stop acting like your sisters and be a man and atone for the things that you said. I'm pretty sure you know that word since you said you look up everything. Look up this. Atone for what you did, boy. You talk disrespectful about a 19-year-old. You must feel like a big man that you was talking about a teenager in that way for these white people to give you a million-dollar check. Disney, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. All of you black people that act like you so pro-black, did you niggas forget that I was black or something? So I don't want to hear all this crybaby talk now when I say something back because I've been black all my life and I ain't hear none of you niggas crying about what they were saying about me. So don't cry now. Yeah, the chickens have come home to roost, boy. And I'm your worst nightmare. You got the algorithm. You got your bosses at Disney. You got all your little people that's backing you. Now you got our heart radio. All that is is big major media conglomerates coming together to try to squash out my voice because everybody knows you a phony. Everything about you is made up and fake. And you should not be allowed to talk this disrespectful about a sport that you, sir, cannot play. You were you you sucked. You were no good. When you were sitting up here talking with Mark Jackson, you guys are from the same neighborhood. Mark Jackson is going to say on video, we from the same area right up the street. He never confirmed one of your plan stories. He never said, yeah, man, I remember when you was hooping this and this and that right up the street. You have no history, Stephen A. You ain't got to like me. <laughs> uh, you, you ain't got to like me, but you'll damn sure respect me. Luda. Stephen A. Smith probably was a nerd and uh, and a wimp like uh, in life. Weak boy. Of course he was. You see, he had nothing but sisters. His daddy rejected him because he acted like his sisters. You know how men are. Let's, let's call a spade a spade. The reason why Stephen A. Smith act like this is because he resent his father. Did his father say something to him that was right? No. He said something to him, and at the time, he thought he was right. If you look at Stephen A's logic right here, he thought he's right by disrespecting a 19-year-old in the way that he did because at his logic, I sucked. I couldn't play basketball. Even though I'm at the 
the number one level you can get to on that sport. I'm at the number one level. You could say he needs more development or things of that nature, but right away, he's F Kwame, he's a bona fide scrub because he wanted to kiss ass for Michael. See, that boy got so much shit on his nose that I'm surprised that he don't just smell like a sewer every time he walk. This is a brown nosing little boy. Anybody with power, he get up under. He he learned that from his sisters and all the females he'd been around. He get up under other men. And that's why they know they can use Stephen A. Smith the way that they do. But his father said something to him at the time that he thought was right. Boy, you a dummy. You can't read. He's an idiot. And although that's something not nice to say, but look at Stephen A.'s logic. Clearly, he got his, his father's logic because he think it's okay to talk disrespectful like that about a teenager. I forgot. I'm of the dark skin, Hugh, though. You know, so they probably thought I was a grown man at 19. So it's OK to talk about a black teenager the way this grown man did. But when this black teenager grow up to be a grown man and start kicking draws and asses. Now, this black bald head weasel grown man can turn around and tell me that he, all I'm doing is talking about black men. Boy, stop. All you've done is disrespect black men. Allen Iverson, uh, your coach, Big Gaines myself Kyrie Irving Kevin Durant and any other black athlete you came across because you weak let's keep it a buck now I wrote down some time stamps let's go to the four minute mark of Stephen A Smith and then you can kind of see the history of why Stephen A Smith is the way he is yeah and struggling in school and whatever kids laughing at you people thinking you were dumb stuff like that having to overcome all those odds my own dad felt that there was no hope i was in the fourth grade my father looked at my father looked my mother dead in the face in the kitchen like he's a lost cause he's just not smart he ain't going nowhere and stuff like that my mother refused to buy into it refused to believe it now that is an ugly thing for a man to say to a kid but Stephen a you got to go to counseling you got to get over that my brother that's the reason why you disrespect black men in the way that you do your first love hurt you in the worst way possible, which is your father. So that's why you gravitate to women. That's why you have feminine energy. That's why you have no respect for black males. And that's why you think you better than us black males. And any man that talks strong and talk with respect and bass in his voice, um, it kind of reminds you of your father. Your father probably didn't like you because you were more of a nerd. You can't play ball. Just look at you. Just look at you. If, if, this is how you are as a grown man. In all fairness to your father, if this is how you are as a grown man, imagine you as a child. Look at your coordination as an adult and imagine you as a child. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He can't catch the ball. He's got bad feet. He can't really move, even though he's mobile. Doesn't really know what he's doing. Doesn't have a post move that he, he puts to memory that he can do two times in a row. He has no game whatsoever. Plays no defense. Doesn't have the heart, the passion, or anything that comes with it. Now, this man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He now, Stephen A., this is you as a grown man. Now, as a grown man, like, just think about it. Your father is taking you to a park. He's trying to throw the ball. Son, I love you, boy. Throw the ball. Imagine you're a grown man and you only got it halfway to the mound as a grown-up so probably as a kid you couldn't even throw it outside of the clay dirt so your daddy was growing frustrated with you then he'd take you to school you can't learn a damn thing in school so he probably he didn't say that on day one you giving your daddy a bad rap that he probably worked with you and worked with you and worked with you and then determined you was a lost call you want to try to paint a picture of your black daddy like he just walked home one day and said this boy a lost call no it was your actions like you say right it was your it was your game it was your reading maybe he the one drove you to be this you need to go and thank your daddy because if it wasn't for what your daddy said to you maybe had you listened to your mama just having a cupcake party with you you know then nothing would have happened you said after your daddy said that to you it broke you down. See, you got to tear down before you can build up. So don't ever question daddy, boy. You need to stop telling this story as a victim story because without your daddy telling you that, although it was mean, 
without him telling you that you would have never got focused you would have never as you say to this day you look up words and you go find those words all because of what your daddy said to you so because of what your daddy said to you you were able to take care of your mother and retire your mother because of what your daddy said to you you little wimp but you want to tell the story as if your daddy didn't give you nothing he gave you a fuel up under your ass for you to stop being a little mush melly dweeb because you were not doing your work you were by your own admission struggling and all he needed to do was say that to you and look what happened that man breathed life into you you don't gotta like it you you little soft mush melly punk but he broke he breathed life into you look at you now who would you be without your father telling you that he challenged you that's what a man is supposed to do to a boy and if you look at most of these little boys out here in the world today if they're not met face to face with a challenge face to face with a man that's right there to correct their bullcrap behavior then they'll turn into killers so Stephen a stop telling this story like your daddy didn't help you without your daddy telling you that you still wouldn't be able to read you still a punk but your daddy tried to help you because look at what he had to work with but you asked for this Stephen a constantly believing in me and pushing me to be the best that I can be knowing the level of ambition I was going to have when I heard that and um you know she's you know I, I anything that's good about me I give her all the, all the glory you give her all the glory because you were a dummy. What it sounds like is your mama was pacifying you and telling you what you wanted to hear. And that's what they're supposed to do. Shout out to mom because they were supposed to play good cop, bad cop. Daddy is supposed to break you down. Mama is supposed to build you back up. But what you're not supposed to do is get on camera and demonize your father and praise your mother, you clown. They worked as a tandem in unison to raise this little thing called Stephen A. Smith. You couldn't have one without the other, idiot, because your mother, with her praising and pouring life into you, you still was reading poorly, you idiot. It wasn't until your father said what he said to you. By your own admission, Stephen A., it was not until your father said something that although it hurt your little feelings, it lit a fire up under you, Stephen A. So you might want to look at this story from a different angle, Stephen A. To raise a young man, it takes you to tear them down to build them back up and that's why you need a woman and you need a man the male is the disciplinary he didn't kick your ass he told you you a lost cause was it nice no but did it drive you to be better than who you are or what you were yes so stop crying Stephen a stop telling the story for the white media to think your daddy is bad when he raised a son that was able to take care of his mama and of course the God himself because nobody deserves it more than those two and so I recognize that and I understand it and it's something that I try to live up to I fall short no doubt from time to time there's no question about that but you know I, I in terms of my heart being in the right place I'll put myself up there with anybody because I really really don't wish harm or mean harm or whatever but I am a guy that tells them you don't got to wish harm you don't got to mean harm but because the way you grew up with your father not liking you you don't know how to respect other males you look at your father as somebody who dissed you instead of as somebody who challenged you. And that's the flaw that you have. That's why it's going to haunt you the rest of your life. You're going to keep telling this weak story as if your father didn't do nothing for you. If not anything, he gave you the tools to be better than what you were going to be. You were going to be a coward. You all this nice stuff. You still a coward, but at least he made you tap into that thing that 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 manhood where you stop bitching and moaning and you do and you started doing the work you started looking up words you started memorizing those words he made you a more intelligent man with one sign of disrespect and you know why because you want to prove to your father that one statement you made you a better man you wanted to prove to your father now when what was supposed to happen is you not resent your father and then you go into adulthood, he could tell you and explain to you, hey, you know, I just saw some of the things you were doing. I may have didn't say it in the right way. I love you, son. I apologize. But I'm glad it made you a man. 
but you never got that so now you're just a bitter grumpy old man it's sad Stephen A And I just had to make sure that prioritize and making something of myself. So my vision was clear. And, you know, even though I would be on the basketball court playing and all of this other stuff, in the end, the thing that I feared most was somebody calling me a dummy and being right. So I went about the business of educating myself every single day, even to this day when people talk about my vocabulary. If there's a word that I'm reading and I don't understand it, to this day, I'll grab the dictionary and I'll look the word up and I'll look at the context in which it's used. And then I'll memorize that and how it's been used to elevate my vocabulary. I do that to this very day. So, okay, Stephen A. So we can see that your dad pushed you to learn every single day. So I will, I want to go on record to say, Stephen A., how my name is pronounced, uh, it's called, it's, you say it like this, Kwame. So going forward, I know you're going to see this because you always mention my name. So going forward, since you study every day, there would be no need for you to say Kwame or Kwame Brown. Even if you get loud, you don't got to shuck and jive for the white man. Because if you say it like this, Kwame, it wouldn't be that funny if you get loud. Kwame! See, it's not that funny. So you need that Kwame Brown to sound like a shucking and jiving little nigger that you are. But now that I know that you have the intelligence, and to this day you study and you make sure that you say words right, how you pronounce my name going forward is Kwame. Okay? You got that? But... I don't think you should be crying so hard about your father the way that you are because ever since your father said that to you, you seem to give a freak about life and you seem to get your head out of your behind and whatever you was doing before, you stopped doing it. So why don't you stop crying and blaming your daddy and man up? He ain't gonna do it until this time. And you know, the cats that were running things would instruct all of them, leave him alone, don't bother. Let him do his thing. So they would let me sit out there and practice and shoot until it was time for them to start doing it. Then they would be like, little man, you got to go home. And then I would go home from there. They didn't have to do that. And so, and then you had other cats that try to get you. They try to recruit you and get you involved. First, they're going to start out by coming to you, telling you to stand on the corner, you know, be on the lookout, you know, watch for 5 all of that other stuff. Other times they would come to you and they probably give you a nickel bag or whatever at the time and be telling you, go ahead and do this or that. Those deals. Can you imagine anybody coming up to this little puny dude trying to give him some rocks? There's no way. This dude want to be street so bad just because he's from New York. Not one time Mark Jackson is going to stop him and say, I remember you hooping. Not one time. It was wasn't having that. I was not to be touched. I was not to be messed with. I was not to be influenced. Leave him alone. Because they always viewed me as they told me. They told They said I was militant even back then they were like you gonna you gonna fight for us one day talk about black folks overall period they were like you're gonna be you're gonna do something where you fight in on our behalf they didn't know whether i was gonna be a lawyer i was gonna be in the media but they knew i was gonna do something and they they were like he is not to be touched and nobody bothered me because of that so i always give those cats those props because i remember this and i've said boy they were wrong <laughs> shit boy they had never been so wrong in their life because you do the exact opposite. You might have started off wanting to help black people, but once you got a taste of white is money, boy, you ain't never looked back. So, yeah, they were wrong about you. They go, they looked at you and said they don't know what you're going to do. You're going to be in the media. You're going to be a pastor, a doctor, a lawyer. Come on, man. You talking about some niggas just standing on the street corner selling drugs just thought that you was going to be all world. This nigga always got a story. <laughs> you can never hear the history, never see the work of this guy, but he always got a story. All right, Brick. <laughs> That's Brick right there. This on many, many occasions to people. If you knew, if you truly, truly know anything about the streets, real hardcore street cats despise wannabes. would have i would have done it when i was younger and these are guys these are made up stories because no. we, we, we're both from the same neighborhood yes so people that we're very familiar with very that uh that supported us and made sure 
hands off when it comes to right. those guys or those individuals because they spot talent. They spot people that's living for a purpose and a dream. Yep. And uh, shout. So they spotted Stephen A. Talent that he was militant. They ain't say nothing about he can hoop. They spotted his talent and say, "Boy, you was militant." <laughs> <laughs> Stephen A. Talent was that he was militant. Mark Jackson, uh, none of these people, nobody on the panel said that nobody from his neighborhood said he could hoop. Not one person, not even Mark Jackson from his neighborhood. He never got up here and said, I remember you hooping from back in the day. This could have stamped Stephen A. A guy from his neighborhood and Mark Jackson say, man, Stephen A., I remember we had them runs over such and such, and you was killing it. No, none of that. None of that was said. Come on, Stephen A. Bruh, you got to do better than this. This is what you coming with? You know, they keep talking about I average one and a half points in college. It's actually less. I didn't play. I cracked my kneecap in half the <laughs> second I got there. I mean, what, what are you talking about? So that's number one. But number two, it's like, I'm looking at the Pelicans and I'm like, you talking about me. I'm 56 years old. Well, first of all, first of all, I'm sitting there going like, you in the Pelican, Stephen A. What's happening? <laughs> Man, these brothers, these brothers, well, first of all, first of all, I'm sitting there going like this. You know, they keep talking about I average one and a half points in college. It's actually less. I didn't play. I cracked my kneecap in half the second I got there. I mean, what, what are you talking about? So that's number one. Guy keeps telling this story and it gets worse and worse and worse. You played nine games and had one and a half point. It keeps getting worse and worse and worse. But let's get to the part where he said, you can't get nobody to go against what he's saying, talking about me. Hold on. I don't know anyone on the planet who would tell me that I'm wrong about what I said. Now, that was years ago. They're like, you talking about us? Me shoot without warming up. I shoot an air ball. They gonna show that from 12 years ago. I'm like, I said, is that what you got? Go ahead. Right. And then you, you got, got this damn Kwame Brown talking. And I'm sitting there like, you talking about us talking about black people. All you do is talking about black people. You going over about black people every day. I ain't never talk about you personally. I ain't never talk about your family. I ain't never talk about you. I never would do that. All I said was on the NBA level, you couldn't play. Now, I don't know anyone on the planet who would tell me that I'm wrong about what I said. Now, that was years ago. So it's like, I I'm sorry. I don't mean to be. I'm like, I apologize, bro. I'm sorry for telling the truth at the time. My, My bad. bad. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it to haunt you 15 years later. It's okay. I wish you nothing but the best. But every time I turn around, a brother keep talking about me. So I said, I guess it's, I guess that's going to get you clicks. So go ahead and get them. Gotcha. I didn't mean to interrupt, guys. I'm going to let you get back to what you do. I just want to shout both of you out, man. And y'all enjoy the rest of y'all after right, night. Man. Much love. I appreciate love. you. Anytime, bro. No doubt. Thank you. All right, love. I got to say, though, Kwame Brown played for me with the Golden State Warriors and was very good as a backup center and a starting center when we had no big. So great screen set, a great diver and a, and a professional. Thank so. you for telling me. Stephen A. just said, I don't know anybody that will disagree with me for saying what I just said. And right after the break, Mark Jackson said, well, I got to tell you, Kwame Brown played for me for Golden State. And he was good as a backup center and even as a starter. And he was professional. Great screener, great diver, and he was professional. So that's somebody that's disagreeing with you. <laughs> what a dummy. Stephen A., give it up, boy. You lost even on your own show. Mark Jackson, somebody from your own neighborhood, somebody that we can actually respect for hooping, somebody that we can see his body of work, stamped a bus and said, no, Stephen A., Actually, the man can play. So, Stephen A., it's a shame, Stephen A. You still want to go with this narrative. All the hoopers know that what it takes to even get to that level, you should not even be talking like this, sir. And this is the problem with you. The reason why Mark Jackson is not playing basketball or coaching basketball right now is because Mark Jackson prayed dang near before every practice in every game. And Mark Jackson prayed for... Uh, Clay Thompson. Clay Thompson, in my opinion, would not be Clay Thompson without Mark Jackson. Uh, that team alone, Steph Curry, wouldn't be Steph Curry without Mark Jackson. Any other coach, when Steph Curry was rolling his ankles the way he was having those ankle injuries, and I'm not trying to take away from the work of Steph Curry, but Mark Jackson was right there along the way, keeping it real and being honest, breathing life into those players. 
Nate Robinson, all those guys had fun uh, with Mark Jackson. Hell, I had fun with Mark Jackson. You didn't have to hide when it came to Mark Jackson. You could be yourself as long as you came and worked hard. And, you know, I was mad as I don't know what. I got hurt. Even to the point where I was trying to work out and keep the door open and shit, yell and shout so I can be a part of the team because, shit, I had just had a baby. Uh, shit, I was mad. I was depressed. I'm angry. I tore my peck. Just had a little baby girl. Y'all don't understand the mental side of the things. They just label you crazy. It's like, nah, nigga, I'm on a one-year deal. I just killed it in Charlotte. They didn't give me a, a long-term deal. They gave me a one-year deal. I just had a baby. Now I'm hurt. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's back at square one. You got to fight for a job over again. Another knife you got to go up under in the summertime. Because at that time, damn near every summer, I was going up under the knife. So people don't understand that aspect of the game. They see you can't dunk or they see you can't jump. And they're like, oh, he suck. It's like, nah, nigga, I got screws all in my ankle. I got shit wrong with me that I'm just playing through. And Mark Jackson seen that. I remember one time in a game, I dislocated my finger. I, I look around, I'm like, damn. I ain't know what was going on with my finger. My finger over this way. And it's hey, like, oh, you got to come out the game. I'm like, hell no, I ain't coming out the game, shit, because this dude might play. I'm on a one-year deal. I ain't coming out the game. No, I'm playing. Fix this real quick. <laughs> Pop! Put some tape on it. I'm in the game. And that's how you're supposed to be, you know, because that other guy might come behind and outshine you. So, no, you got to play. These guys ain't like that no more. They care so much about numbers that they will not go out there with a wrap all over your hamstring where you can barely run. Because if you can help the team win, that's your number one job is to help the team win. If you can play some defense, if you can get your main score open, you still helping the team. But because so many of these media pundits make it about numbers, make it about personal stats and accolades, it's not about we losing sight of what the team needs. The team might just need you to go in there for five or six minutes and keep this big motherfucker from, from scoring. And that might help us win. And if you got it in you to do it, then do it. Let the numbers fall where they may. You played your role at this highest level. We watched it from the start. Uh, from the start. He doesn't know the game clearly. Absolutely he doesn't. He doesn't know anything. We got too many guys like this that's talking from an opinion standpoint or I saw the game standpoint other than I did it. Not only did I see it, I did it. I lived it. I have a life's work since a kid getting up to go to the AAU games. He don't have that grind. He's just a talker. So Stephen A, with all due respect, no, nah, forget that. With all due disrespect, you don't know what you're talking about, dude. And until you man up and, like I said, atone for what you did. There's no other race of uh, 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 people, no other race you would be able to do this to. No other sex you would be able to do what you did to me. Imagine Stephen A. Smith being able to talk about a 19-year-old white kid. Not going to happen. Imagine Stephen A. being able to talk about a 19-year-old white girl the way he talked about me. Not going to happen. See, imagine Stephen A. saying one negative thing about a black girl who was 19 who made it up out of poverty and made it up out of the ghetto. He would never be able to talk like this because it's a black male, because it's a geeky male, because I have darker skin, then they don't look at me as a 19-year-old kid. I'm lucky to be alive. If God would have put another kid in this situation, he probably would be dead right now. I was the right guy for the job. And Stephen A., it's preordained why I'm here. You just don't know it yet. Because what you did to me was supposed to kill the average man. But Stephen A., I ain't average. So all this chirping and keeping mentioning in my name, I don't know why you're doing that. But hopefully this will be a lesson to you. I was going to sit here and roast you all day, laugh and joke. But y'all already going to try to demonetize me. But hopefully you just learned your lesson. You sat up here on Mark Jackson's show, a guy from your neighborhood, and not one time did Mark Jackson say, I remember I seen you at this tournament and you did X, Y, and Z. Even in this video, you're going to say, at this park that y'all went to, you only won two games. Two. We used to go to the park and never get off. We used to run the park. So, Stephen A., you have no history, my friend. Please stop speaking on the likeness of the guys like me. You not one of them guys. Please don't use money and use the fact that you on TV. I made the world stop and listen to me, Stephen A. Stephen A., I fed all of YouTube for two years, Stephen A. 
I made YouTube change their whole policy and rules because of one little old guy that you called the bus, Stephen A. Somebody could upload my videos and get 180,000 views for the same video that 20 other people put on the same platform. And now YouTube won't allow that because they didn't even have enough foresight to even understand a Kwame Brown was going to come along. They don't even understand why I gave up so much revenue like that. But the smart people get it. The smart people understand. I'm not made to be controlled by anybody. I'm made different than you, Stephen A. So talking about you is like a drop in a bucket. And talking about you helped you get a, a job outside of your job. You never had an independent anything until me. And don't you forget that. All right, boy. Making it means you can play in the NBA uh, and listening to him more and more. He's not qualified to talk about to talk about who should be in the league. He's definitely not. And that's the thing. You went to high schools and colleges. What did they learn by you showing up on campus, Stephen A? What were you teaching those young boys and those young girls? That Kwame was a bust? That you shouldn't try to go after your dreams? Because look at this other 19-year-old. It's not working out for him. Even though he got secured $12 million at 19 years old, it's not working out for him. Y'all shouldn't be that guy. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith, just a clip from your play rec league. Just a clip from you playing rec league. Man, this is, this is a shame, man. They wouldn't found this guy. And I can have reasons, which you would call excuses, while things didn't go the way they were supposed to go with me. But Stephen A., I just want you to see this one more time. This is you. If this was my son, I'd be upset too. Because imagine, you goofy like this as an adult. Imagine you as a kid, if you goofy like this as an adult. This man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He can't catch the ball. He's got bad feet. He can't really move, even though he's mobile. Doesn't really know what he's doing. Doesn't have a post move that he, he puts to memory that he can do two times in a row. He has no game whatsoever. Plays no defense. Doesn't have the heart, the passion, or anything that comes with it. Now, this man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He. I mean, you try hard. You dug into that pitch. I mean, you try hard. You just ain't got nothing with it. Uh, you try hard on that boxing. I mean... You never learned how to do a little straight jab. You never learned basic anything. It's sad, Stephen A. It's sad to be you. <laughs> Even when you get a girl, all the shit you talk about me, you know I can still get her, right? <laughs> Stephen A, all the shit you talk about me, I could take your gal. I'm smarter than you. I look better than you. I played better than you. I had every college in the country want me. You had to go get a nigga to take you to get a scholarship where allegedly you scored 51 points or some shit like that. 17 threes in a row. All these outlandish stories that you tell. I teach my daughters to stay away from men like you. Posers. Niggas that's going to have to dial 911 before they stand up and confront the problem. Yeah, I teach my daughters to stay away from niggas like you. But Stephen A., that's all the time I got for you. Please stop mentioning my name. I know you made a career off talking about me and not to me. Grow some kahunas, boy. Grow some kahunas and come have a conversation like a man. Stephen A. Smith sounds like the teacher who lied uh, to their students about being from the hood because he's trying to relate. Stephen A. Smith, salute to your dad for punishing you. <laughs> His dad punished him. He ain't never get over it. Little weak goober. You accomplished something Stephen A. Smith never could. Stephen A. never could. Yeah. Being a man. <laughs> this nigga here. The baseball game of... <laughs> <coughs> the baseball gave up halfway like Stephen A. Hairline. Laugh out loud. Man, this man is a joke. I'm telling you right now, this man is a joke. We need to hear Buck dancing. That's the number one hit. 
Yeah, man, I play buck dancing for y'all, man. This boy here. Hey, I don't know why he mentioned my name, but thank you, Stephen A. Um, you need to go call Disney, man. Ask them why did they send you to those heights? Is that who's uh, listen, Stephen A. All you gotta do is answer this question. Did Disney pay you to go to those high schools and colleges? Did they? Because I would like to know, why did they pay you to go to high schools and colleges to talk about me? I, I just want to know that. You get, when, when me and you talk, get Disney in the room too, okay? I would love to know, why were they paying you to talk about a teenager? You know, because in high school, they said no bullying. And all of a sudden, I'm one year removed, and then they're bullying? Or is that what you call it? <laughs> oh, it's not bullying when a black man got money. Oh, okay. Keep talking, Stephen A. Smith. You look weak. You sit down when you pee. Of course he do. Salute to you, Russell. You guys probably encounter each other on a neutral platform. No, he need to give me some of that money back he stole out my pocket. He need to come on his little do fake doctor degree ass, fake uh, fake Q dog. Come on over here and have a conversation like a man. I know that's going to be hard for him to do because he a wimp, but he need to have a conversation like a man. I didn't ask him to talk about me for 20 years. And he went outside of his job when he went to high schools and colleges uh, to talk like he's a stand-up comedian. I didn't know that was a part of his pay grade to do that at high schools and colleges. Fill me in on the information. Who sick this boy on me? I, I want to know. Pause. Answer the little hole you in. Another one. Another one. Buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, little hoe, butt dancing, buck dancing, little hoe, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, buck dancing, butt dancing, you a hoe, pull out here, buck dancing, pull out here, you a hoe, pull out here. Buck dancing, pull out chip. Five oh four miles of the south say. He's a whole pull out chip, boy. You 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 a whole pull out chip. Buck dancing, pull out chip. Put them Negro in they place. You let them know it's they for buck dancing. Get mad at me. Get mad at me. Get mad at me. Get mad at me. Put them Negro in they place. You let them know it's they for buck dancing. Come good, come get them. Come good, come get them, boy. Yes, I Smith, I'm done with you. I'm about to see what I got in this fridge. Put that back up there. Yeah, I got I got some background watches all the time, so I don't want nobody to be looking in the fridge, being able to see. All my respect, um, sir. Appreciate it. Always respect. Always my respect, sir. Appreciate that. Am I smoking weed? Oh, I'm about to in a second. I'm about to smoke some CBD. But y'all have a blessed day, man. I'm up out of this thing. Sorry this thing took so long. I only wanted to make this 30 minutes because this, this clown ain't worth my time. He talking about clout chasing. When he bring my name up every draft class, 
prior to me coming to the internet. So I don't need to clout chase, clout chase these clowns. These clowns was talking about me. My name always rang bells. That's why they keep bringing my name up in such disparaging ways. I don't know why they've trained so many people to think that I'm some loser, but in real life though. <laughs> but y'all have a blessed day. I'm still an angry vegan right now. Still no drinking, just a little bit of smoking, but no drinking, no eating meat, uh, no eating dairy, no animal products. You know, when you a bus, you can do things like that. You can abstain from things for long periods at a time because you like that. Stephen A, abstain from lying and finally tell the truth. Tell us how you really feel. Because I think I just psychoanalyze you since you like to psychoanalyze everybody else. I think I just psychoanalyze you, boy. <laughs> and I think you a loser in the inside. I think you value material things and you count those as being a winner because you think that material things make you a better person. And that's sad. But you have a blessed day, Stephen A. Until next time you mention me, I'll respond. But hopefully this time you man enough to have a conversation with me. But I highly doubt it. That's what you weasels do. You talk and then hide your hand. But make sure everybody know that this is you. But I, I got want. something very simple to tell you that I, I figured out that I think will work for anybody in the world of corporate America and beyond. I wake up every day with two missions in mind. How do I make my bosses more money and how do I get some of it? Very simple. Why? If white folks can clone you right now, they would. You the perfect jigger boy for them. If they can clone you right now, Stephen A, they would. But you not my kind. Stop saying you my kind. Stop saying I'm just talking about black people. You ain't black. If Joe Biden can say we ain't black for not voting for him, then I, I as a black man, you ain't black. So I'm up out of this thing. I'm gone.